Hello, it's Kenny. Welcome to Lesson 30. And today I'm going to be teaching the final lesson of Grade 3. After that, I'll move on to Grade 4. Today I want to teach the Blue Danube Waltz by this man, Johann Strauss II. He was born in 1825 and he died in 1899 and he lived an entire life in the city of Vienna. We asked Vienna again, the capital city of music during the 1800s. There's so many very, very famous composers came from there, or were in there. All right, and you'll notice the title here, the Blue Danube. What is the Danube? Well, it is a river. It goes through many European countries, but it also goes right through the heart of the city of Vienna. And Strauss wrote this waltz just because it was in his city and it was a very, very famous river. But anyway, why is he called Johann Strauss II? Well, there was another guy, Johann Strauss I, his father. Didn't want him to become a composer. He wanted his son to be something else because Johann Strauss I was also uh, writing a lot of waltzes. <laughs> Maybe he was a bit jealous, but his son wrote many, many more waltzes. He defied his father and said, yes, I want to write waltzes too. And it was a good decision. Now, just so there's no confusion, this man too, his name is Richard Strauss, but there's no relation. However, he, he was a German, he wasn't an Austrian like the other two Strausses, but he also wrote some magnificent waltzes. Now the waltz itself is a very popular form. It's just a dancing three, four, but what we'll focus on in this piece is the Viennese waltz, the waltz that came from Vienna in the time of our composer, Johann Strauss II. Okay, and this waltz, it was almost scandalous in his day, all right? It was a very fast waltz. It, it was kind of, you know, it was played at parties and at balls and stuff. And it was very elegant. If you notice those dancers there, that's the kind of, they'd dress up and they would twirl around and it was very, very popular. And Mr. Strauss, he would take around his own orchestra to places. He play, he's playing in almost like parties or rock concerts to some extent, okay? And he had his own orchestra, his own band, so to speak, okay? And he led it while playing the violin. Now, this form of the waltz is still popular today. In fact, there's a man going around called Andre Rio. You go see him live still today or see him on YouTube, and he does exactly what Johann Strauss does. He goes around with his own orchestra, leads it by playing the violin. He's very good at it, all right? He plays mostly Strauss waltzes, and guess what he calls his orchestra? The Johann Strauss Orchestra. Okay, so this form is not dead to this day by any means. Okay, before I go on to teach the lesson, I will quickly play it for you. The melody in this piece is very simple. We're in C major, no sharps, no flats, and in 3-4. You can change the key, you cannot change the time signature, because a waltz has to be in 3-4. It's just what it is. It's part of its definition. But the melody here, I'll play just a bit of it, is very simple. It's got the same pattern all the time. Okay, the same pattern, it's just going a little bit down here, and then a couple notes of the octave higher. Okay, and nothing really gets complicated in the melody. Just You can learn this all by yourself. I didn't put any fingering in here because it's very simple. And the only real change happens right near here, the end. You've got this... F sharp there. It's not changing the key. It's just a nice sounding little change in there. 
instead of. All right, it sounds so much nicer. All right, and then it just continues on here. And here at the very end, you have a dotted quarter note. Just to put some emphasis on that. Now, as for the left hand, the chords are very simple. All right, I've given you, as you know, I always give you the chords too. So here they are. The only chords here, you've got your C, a C7, an F, a D minor, a G, and a G7. I'll explain the D minor in a little bit here. Okay, but as we go on here, all right, let's see, that seems okay. There we are. All right, so you've got your first chord here, is your C, okay? You can play this. doesn't sound too good. What do you want to do with your chords in your left hand? It's still a basic C triad, but the best way to do this with a waltz, or a Viennese waltz in particular, is to do this, what I call it, the oompa pa thing. You've got one note at the bottom. It's still a C chord, C, E, and G. And you've got that nice waltz rhythm. got the G coming in here and I've put a G7 there but you have to have it as a G7 because okay because there's an F natural even in the melody so you have to play it in G7 all right remember what a seventh is is you got your G chord and then you go up a little bit more a minor three third you go up three semitones and you find that G7 Okay, so you play that G instead of You can stretch your fingers a little bit to get that G7 in there, all right? It's not that much harder. So you end up with something like this. Okay, not too tricky. Just practice them separately. Just get that left hand going automatically. You want that oompa pa rhythm just to be natural. Okay, and I said I would mention down here what we're doing here with this D minor chord, all right? Here we start here. Okay. It's just for flavor. You could have changed to G right there. sound quite as good and sometimes you want to use these D minor chords all right in the key of C you've got the C E G and then the D minor is just the next one up the, the minor chord starting on the D D F A all right and it's related very very closely to this G seventh all right the only difference is there's an A in there all right all right so the D minor just sounds a little bit nicer. All right, if you don't want to play the D minor there, you don't have to, but try to play it there. It's a very nice chord. And it just sounds so nice with the piece. Now, once you get comfortable with this simple version, want to fill it in a bit. It sounds kind of plain, doesn't it? And you got to remember, as I said in the introduction, this was written for a full orchestra. It would have been probably 50 people in this orchestra and Mr. Strauss on the violin all the time. All right, so he fills it in. All right, the whole orchestra has to fill in much more than just. So what you can do and should do is, especially in these that da da does, all right, fill in some of the chords. You can do that, all right? It's still a C chord. We're still in C. And then the G seventh. You can play that whole chord there as long as the melody is still on top. And it sounds so much better that way, all right? And especially when you get down to here, all right? The second half of it, I never mentioned about this C seven. What is it doing, all right? It starts here. seventh again is C E G and 
and go up a minor third. And it just makes it sound so much better when you're heading towards that F. All right, the C7 is the dominant of F, and it just resolves nice, all right? So just keep adding some of these notes. Because this is a lead sheet version of the piece, you're making your own version, really, your own orchestration. There's plenty of them out there, but you're making your own. So you can have even more fun with it. Say, for example, you want to run your chords a little, make it sound kind of fancy and smooth. But what you really want to do to emphasize in this piece, the Viennese waltz was just a, a very, very very fast twirly thing. So you just want to emphasize that 3-4 rhythm. Okay, it just kind of keeps going consistently. Don't slow down or speed up. These, these are for dancers, all right? And dancers don't like slowing down and speeding up. They want to keep at it regular tempo, but just have fun with it. It's a beautiful little piece, probably the most famous waltz ever made, and just enjoy making your own version up of the beautiful Blue Danube by Johann Strauss Jr. Thank you.